Uh-uh. I didn't, can you? I mean, it usually just save it for Okay. Hi, y'all. Who is better fasting? Hey. I'm just letting some of y'all. Oh, thank you. Thank you, y'all like it. It's called what, fuchsia? You see, I got lip to match. How are y'all today? Hi, y'all. I'm just waiting for some of y'all to join in so that the beautiful, talented um, Misa Hilton, yeah, she's joining us today. How y'all doing today? I know, you know, I know, you know I do that on purpose. You know I'm a storyteller. That's what I've been doing for over a decade. I tell stories in this image thing. Hey, Faith. Hey, Ms. Drea. Thank you so much. Y'all love this color. I'm loving y'all. Y'all love me, huh? Thank you. Hey, Chef Wu. Aw. Hey, Chef. Misa. All right, y'all. Misa Hilton is on. Hey, Kevin. Y'all just coming up. Aw, oh, thank you so much. Y'all just coming on in the room. Y'all here to see that day. This heart's all over. I love y'all. Y'all, oh, thank you. Y'all making me all, y'all, listen. Y'all making me blush. I got to get to Misa because she's so beautiful and talented and amazing. And way before I was in this game, she was setting the stage and setting it on fire. So, who, who was that? Can you, um. Can you come here for one second? Sorry, y'all. Excuse me. I got to ask him. I, I need... Give me some uh, blockage and some... Yeah. Uh-huh. Hi, guys. Y'all know I'm just, you know... Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, y'all. See? I, I need that gone. Who, whoever is... Can't... Uh-uh. Okay, y'all. Sorry, I'm. I, you know. Let's um. I, I don't do uh. Yeah, let's try to. Yeah, we need blockage, y'all. So I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah, you know. I'm over here like y'all know. I don't play that. Okay, come on. Let's go live with Misa. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for joining in. Let me get to this beautiful, gorgeous Misa Hilton. Y'all see Fashion Bomb Daily on here? Claire, she's in the mood. Hey! So I had to do some blockage before you came on. <laughs> she don't play. I'm trying to, you know. Hey, beautiful. How you doing? You look so good. Okay. Thank so, you. Let me, everybody is just like coming in the room to see you. You know how oh, iconic. Hi, everybody. You know how iconic you are? Okay, so let me make this wonderful introduction as much as I can. This is the amazing, the talented, the game changer, Misa Hilton from Little Kim to uh, Mary J. Blige now to you created the um, corset for Beyonce in yes. the eight-ish, you know, I'm trying not to, video. Yes. <laughs> now having a documentary really about you and, and you and what you did to change this game for hip hop and fashion. The beautiful Misa Hilton. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much for being on here and joining me. Of course. Me. Okay. Of course. So, first of all, the hair is fire. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I, I just did the big shot without being bald. <laughs> I, I, I would. Okay, so listen. For those that don't really, you see Claire on here. You got fashion models. Hey models. Claire. Um, hey Rika. Look, everybody joining. Okay, so listen. <laughs> for those people that aren't so familiar with Misa Hilton, so can you tell us just like how you got started? How did you even know that you loved fashion? Um, 
I loved fashion as early as I can remember. I mean, my earliest memories of playing dress up and changing my clothes a million times a day and my hairstyles to go with it was like four or five years old. And I would actually get in trouble for making a bunch of laundry for my mother. <laughs> but I've just always been a creative child. And the way I expressed my creativity was through my look, through my clothes and through my hair. Um, I didn't know that I was a fashion girl or that I would become a fashion professional, but it's just always been in me since the beginning. It's like God gives us gifts. Yes. We don't even know why. It's like we start looking around, imagining and looking at people like, I could do that. I wonder if they should wear yeah. this or they should wear that, yeah. right? Yeah. And I look at it as my art. Don't you look at it like that? It's I like it's my art. Yeah. I feel like we're storytellers. Like we That's get to right. tell a story. Through the appearance, right? Yes. And so yes. how did you get, I know, but how did you get started in the industry? Okay, so um, fate would have it that I would start dating this amazing intern <laughs> by the name of Sean Puffy Combs. Diddy. <laughs> yes, Diddy. Wasn't Diddy back then. They said Latin, yeah, like he, he was Latin. Sean or Puffy. And uh, we started dating around the time he was transitioning from um, intern to a and r And so I would spend a lot of time hanging out at Uptown Records. And back then, Uptown Records was like an urban Motown. It was just amazing. The energy, the vibe, the artists, the music in the hallways, the creativity. At any given day, you could see Heavy D and the Boys, Vanessa Sinquist. You could see uh, Bobby Brown, Alvy Shore. Uh, Christopher Aww. Williams, Chris. Joe to see, like, it, yeah. that, that's, that's what was going on up there. And I would just go to Sean's office after school, sit and hang out. And as he was um, working on the Joe to see project and he was putting the album together and coming up with the look, I was there. And I was there at the right moment, at the right time with the gifts that were needed to support what he was doing. And so um, I helped him in developing that look and bringing that look to life and selling the idea of putting some R&B singers singing about love and some combat boots and hoodies and baseball caps. And I helped him sell the idea to Andre Harrell. And um, he gave us that shot. And that was a wonderful thing about Andre. He loved young people and their ideas. And he gave us that, that freedom to create. And we created magic. Because Jodeci took off and they became big trendsetters and they changed the game of how the R&B singer looked. And then because that was successful, Andre wanted me to be a part of his next artist who was coming out, Heart Image, and that was the queen herself, Miss Mary J. Blige. Come on, Mary. <laughs> yes. Okay, but listen, but listen, because you have created so many iconic looks, can you just talk about some of the people that you work with? Because you started out working with men. Yes, that was my first, yeah, my first styling experience was with uh, Jodeci. Yeah. And from there, um, I worked with Mary, but I've also worked with Faith Evans, Total, Montel Jordan, Lala Anthony, Vivica Fox, Queen Latifah, Missy Elliott. Come on! Uh, 50 Cent, Fat Joe, uh, SWV, um, uh, Kamara Lee Simmons, Foxy Brown, uh, uh, Kamara Lee Simmons, Foxy Brown, uh, who else? Uh, Girl. So many. Uh, oh, Drew Hill. Um, uh, Lil Kim. You said Little Kim. Little Kim. Did I say Little Kim? How could I forget Little Kim? <laughs> Little you, Kim. That, that was like. <laughs> uh, Rhapsody. Know. Um so many people. Oh my goodness. I uh, worked with uh, Jay-Z, uh, Beyonce, when she was first starting out, when she was still in Destiny's Child, Case. Wow. I worked with wow. everybody just about one one time, at least. <laughs> that is so awesome, Lisa. Like, Thank you. That is like, before I even, listen, I had a mortgage company before I even got into this. So even though it's been over a decade, when I was, and I am, I graduated 1991 high school. So all of the music Me too. When you were styling <laughs> is what, like, that's why I was like, when Iyama said, yeah, just have Misa Hilton on, I was like, oh, no, <laughs> I got to have her. Like, 
when I say you set the stage for this whole, just even in the creativity, just, how did you even, and I, this is so off, but how, how did you even have the guts enough to own your creativity? Because a lot of times we get shut down, like a lot of times, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. when you started out working with men and this is a male dominated industry, like just to be that creative and use that creative voice, how are you brave enough to do that? Well, first, I love Missy Yama. She's my favorite. Um, she <laughs> so you loved you, too. A big she, hug from me. A big she hug called me head. right before this and said, who do you have on tonight? I was like, Misa. <laughs> she was like, Misa. She's teaching a class. So she told oh, okay. me love. Yes, tell yes. her I said my yes. love. Yes. Um, so, well, the, the, the great thing was that um, I had men who supported me and, and gassed me up and put that battery in my back. And so um, when I needed to you know, be courageous or believe in myself. Remember, I had the backing of Heavy D. Uh -huh. I had Puffy. I had uh -huh. Andre Harrell. I had Eddie F. You know, so they, Lance and Rivera, um, big, they all believed in me. And so I felt, you know, I felt confident. And I just really believed in my look. I really liked yeah. what I was doing. I, I loved it. <laughs> you were like, <laughs> You know, we didn't have social media and all these opinions and all that stuff back then. So I really had time to, like, cook up my ideas and let them marinate and, you know, just put it out there to the world. And once it's out, it's, you know, the idea is out there in the world and that's it. And people loved it. But I always believed in my um, my styling work and, and, and everything that I created because I loved it. And um, I just did. I don't know. Um, so tell me, tell me what was one of your highest moments of your career? Highest? Mm hmm Hmm. One of my highest moments. Oh, one, one moment that was super special to me was styling Serena Williams at her house and watching her play tennis. That was like a big moment for me, like see, like being feet away from her and watching her actually play, I was like amazed, you know, it, that, that was, that was a highlight for me. Cause I had worked with mostly celebrities and singers, yeah. um, artists and actresses. So working with her, I think she was my first female athlete that I worked with. Really? And, and I was just worked in awe. with any athletes, any other athletes besides her? Yes. I've worked with, uh, Kenya Martin. I've worked with, uh, I did his wedding actually. His first wife, um, Heather, and and I used to do custom design for both of them. Um, I worked with, um, I'm forgetting, I'm not a big sports person, That's sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but anyway, back to, listen, listen, you're so cute. It's, it's okay, girl. I worked with a few basketball, baseball stars, <laughs> boxers. <laughs> So, so look, so Serena, did you, were you, did you meet her older sister, Isha? Yes, yes. So she's a really good friend of mine, which yes. I can't even see, but she's probably on here, but she's a really good friend of mine. Like, I know that to know her, know her, you would absolutely yes. love her. Yes, yeah. yes. She has a beautiful uh, family. A amazing family. Yes. An amazing yes. family. And so yeah. then let's, let's talk about what was your, you know, because... We've all kind of lived long enough. Life happens to all of us. So tell no. me what was maybe your lowest moment. Um, in my career or in my life? Well, we could do both. Actually, because <laughs> this really, I do, I really do this for women. So whichever one you decide or both, but yeah, what has been, in your career first, what has been one of the moments that you have said, um, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever had moments that you just thought, okay, I just, I want to walk away from this or a moment where you thought um, maybe it was over for you or that you felt like you didn't do such a great job. Um, honestly, I have not ever felt like that in my career. It's like all I've ever done as an adult. This is all I know. And I've always done it. Now I've had my times of getting frustrated and say, I'm retiring. I'm not doing this no more or whatever, but it was just <laughs> yeah. in a moment yeah, of yeah, frustration. Yeah. And whenever I said that I would just get an amazing call or opportunity. And so I would always just still be in it. I don't think I ever felt really um, like 
anything really heavy as it pertains to my career. Um, but it was difficult to see um, my work appropriated and emulated and not given credit and, and you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. That was a little tough sometimes. Um, yeah, so but, we're going to talk about that. We will definitely talk about that in a minute because I think um, it happens so often. But anyway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so now in my life, um, I would yeah. say the most recent challenge, because you know you got a lot of challenges, like which, yes. which 10 years do you want to pick? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> but um, I, the last one was um, me just really hitting a wall financially and feeling like I lost everything and feeling like er all of my success and everything that I achieved was finished. Like I reached the height of everything that I was going to do and money just wasn't coming in fast enough to keep up with everything that I had going on as an entrepreneur, as a mother and me giving up my house to sacrifice so I could continue um, my businesses, my academy, my children could go to college. My daughter was in Howard University at the time. And my son was um, just finishing one year of college. So it was just a lot. It was a lot. And um, it was a humbling moment. It really was. It was really a humbling moment. And um, what I learned was um, how to go deeper with myself, how to become more self-aware, um, I, now, I would say the first six months, I was angry. I was, like, looking for reasons or things to blame a little bit. And even though I didn't want to because I knew better, but it was still like that feeling, whether I expressed it or not. And once I got over that and was ready to go within and just see what this moment was trying to show me and what could be birthed in me from this moment, then I got lighter. And, and things and, and the light and, and the sun came out again and I could see the sun and I was so grateful for everything and I my hope was renewed. It never went away, but it was a little low, yeah. but my hope was renewed and I, I, I really tapped into the power of who I am um, and who God made me to be. I also um, deepened my compassion for people, right? Because we all go through things. So it's like you just have an understanding for what it must feel like for people that go through things like that every single day. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of people would assume that I lived this life and I things have, could have been easy for me because of who I became, who Puffy became and Mary became, and you know, like this right. big right. life. Right. Um, but behind the scenes, we have our challenges and struggles too. And so... <laughs> <laughs> that, that was mine yeah that that was mine and um you know it, it was tough but I made it through and I was, I'm stronger I'm wiser and I'm so grateful that I was obedient and sharing that because one morning I woke up I had started taping the um remix and God said to me share your story absolutely and I absolutely. said <laughs> me? Right. No. Right. What? Right. Because like, right. right. I'm super private. You know, yeah. like I just, you know, I'm behind the scenes. Yeah. Even the documentary was a lot for me, you know, yeah. to, to be in front telling my story. I've just always been behind the scenes and that's where I'm comfortable. And so I knew that I had to do it. And I actually wanted to when um, I thought about it. And I, I like to challenge myself. So if anything is kind of scary or it's something that I got to find some courage about, I really want to do it. And I want right. to, I just want to do it. And I want to get to the other side of it because it's nothing to fear. And right. especially the truth, because the truth is the truth, you yes. know? And if, and if my story can be a blessing to someone else and, and have them be encouraged and feel um, hopeful and know that they don't have to be embarrassed or ashamed or feel like things happen, life happens, it does. Pick yourself back up, dust yourself off, and keep going. Yeah. I'm so I'm so thankful that you shared that, you know, because I think that um, sometimes people are afraid, uh, maybe because of what other people might think or what yeah. other people might say or even their perception of them. But when you go through something so difficult like that, like I lost my mortgage company before this industry, mm -hmm. before I got into this, and I mean, when I say everything, I mean, every ha I had several homes. I, uh, when I yeah. say zero, zero. Mm -hmm. But it really did humble me. It really yes. did teach me 
um, what was really important, like I think this time now, um, mm -hmm. is teaching a lot of people like what really matters. That's the most. right. Mm -hmm. And it also strengthened my trust in God when there was no one but me and him. And when That's I was right. going through a deep depression, literally, girl, I don't think I washed for 10 days. Cause I know I'm acting like mm -hmm. ain't nobody on here, but you understand what you're <laughs> Yes, it gets real. Yes. <laughs> when you are depressed, it is like if it if you allow it to grab a hold of you, it can really take you into a deep, dark place. You know what I mean? Right. Yes, so it I can. The fact that um, I was able to come out of that and come on the other side. And I always say, like, you know, winter comes. But if you can get through the winter, God will bring a summertime That's that will make right. that winter look like it wasn't anything. But that he gets all the glory and the honor because yes. no one else could have done it. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. And, and you, yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, and as a single parent, I was a single parent of three. Yeah. You know? And Me too. Come on, what the? Come on with the fist pump. <laughs> but, you know, and even the fact that, you know, I look back on them and I know all three of them are grown now. And I literally look back like, how? I know it was you, God. I don't even, mm -hmm. it's like, this is what I try to tell people. If you just put one foot in front of the other and don't That's quit. It. That's right. Just don't quit. You yes, can pause. You can quit. sit down for a second, catch your breath, but do not quit. Come on. Just yep. don't quit. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thankful that you shared that because even when I watched the remix, I was just like, wow. Mm -hmm. like, and yeah. why I wanted you on here because I just want women to understand, even women that are iconic and that they see and are like, oh, wow, like they're, you're a woman first. And yes. life happens to all of us. I always say that, yes. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah, it does. Yeah. It really does. And yeah. I think it's something in being stripped down. Oh, it's something so beautiful in that because it, it, it it's hard and it hurts and you don't like it, but you realize I'm the, you're the same. You're the same person yes. with or everything without. or without. Yes. And that's what you have to remember. You are the same person. You are. You definitely are. And the thing is, even like in during this time, I tell people like, even if you have to shift everything, you realize when you have nothing and you got to work your way back that everything that you need, that you've always needed is right here. It's right there. It's right, it's here. right here. Yep. You just got to place a demand on it and go, okay, go hunt, come yes. on. Got, listen, when you don't have any other option, it's like, okay, here we go. Let's yes. get it. You know yep. what I mean? So Absolutely. I'm, I'm super thankful that you shared that because yeah. I know that it helps so many women and people yes. not women people yes yeah and i think it's something like we we especially in this business when i came up it's a little different once the reality tv um era came in and like sharing so much but i came up with you don't share anything like girl you and what goes on in this house stand that's right? it <laughs> <laughs> and i came up in the wendy williams era on the radio talking about mary and jodeci and me and everybody in faith every day oh and so like protecting our business and protecting the things that we were going through privately was really just how we showed up. And we had this cold, you know, so to mm -hmm. share something like that was really a big step for me. And no one, a lot of people did not know that I was going through that because I would still be, you know, I would be doing my jobs here and there and I would be at events and I would be with my smile and I'd pull it all together. And I was going through a lot, really a lot. Yeah. And I think people need to know that even during this time when they're going through stuff. Yes. It really is okay. And I think that one that's one of the things in our culture that has kept us not even talking about mental health. And yes. I literally, I said to, um, I don't know whether it was Coke I was talking to because she said, you know, she figured out she was bipolar. And I mm -hmm. literally said, God, I think I struggled with depression for years. And I, because mm -hmm. we never talked about it, I never knew it was that. It was just like, I got to raise these kids, do what I got to yes. do. You just and keep it going. Yeah. You understand? So yeah. I think it was it's such a beautiful thing and just even being stripped and becoming clear, but becoming mm -hmm. clear on who you are without all the things and the stuff and the people around you and the accolades. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. you. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah. With that being said, you I, you know, this is the most one of the most beautiful things and that I'm proud of just um watching you and that I literally was online Googling. And I'm like, 
because I've been in this industry, Misa Hilton has nothing negative when it comes to like your integrity. Mm, thank you. I want to know how have, because I understand how this industry is. I also understand mm -hmm. that it was male dominated, even though you yeah. were blessed to have men around you that you felt yeah. safe with. Mm -hmm. Just how were you able to keep your integrity during doing everything that you were doing and being in the industry? Um, Cause I know that's, that's not as, if you don't understand who you are, mm -hmm. that's not so easy to do. Yes. I think that I, I've just, my, I like what I like. I'm an energy person and I don't like I what too. I don't like. And I don't I care. Too. So I, I don't care. And I'll sit that one out. I could walk away I, I from do everything. Too. I don't yep. care. I'll struggle. I'll work. I'll just, I just can't. Okay. I can't Wait, do it. Side? If it doesn't. Capricorn. Oh shoot! I'm an Aquarius. I'm like okay. <laughs> my Just best friend like... is Aquarius. Yes, oh, okay. My best best friend. Yeah. <laughs> my sister. Yeah, so I just always stuck with that on every level, even with some of my art and my styling. You know, back then, sometimes they wanted to call it ghetto and they ghetto fabulous and this and that. And now, look, I was just ahead of my time. Now, it's so normal and it's so common, some of the things, but I believed in it and I never changed. I never changed my aesthetic. I never changed who I was. I, I, I have grown as a woman, but I am who I am. And I like what I like, and I don't like what I don't like. If things don't feel good to me, I don't do them. And so I really just trusted that, and I don't think that I could show up any other way. That's just how I have always been. And that same um, character trait is what allowed me to become a stylist and to take this big risk when it didn't really seem like a job at all, where I had to, stand, you know, trust myself and not you know my family members or other people that didn't really see this as something viable or real or that could become anything you know for <laughs> right. me so I, I started that way i started having a you know to 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 rebel to dress the way i wanted to dress uh -huh. to do the things i wanted to do so this this was nothing new for me this you know so by the time like, i got to I was the born for this. this i was built for this <laughs> i got this don't even yeah. worry about it <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. yeah um, so, so even having, so we'll talk about married or single or not later, but even having a family and children mm -hmm. and during the day, being a boss and being a woman that knows what mm -hmm. she wants and, you know, able to handle many, many things and then coming home and we're still expected to be superwoman. I, I really want to know, because I know for myself doing what I love and in both careers came as a big sacrifice, really, for myself. Have you had to sacrifice anything? How were you able to to maintain a family and your children and do uh, balance in all. the industry? Yeah, you know, I did the very best I could do. On the best days, I still missed something. And on the worst days, I still did something great. Yeah. <laughs> that just sums it up. <laughs> that just sums yeah. it up. I mean, yeah. I think that being a mother... And, and being a woman has its own challenges and whether this was <laughs> whether this was my career or I was working um a very structured nine to five I would have been up against some of the same challenges and and you know um um challenges that mothers go through and women go through it's just that I had this I was just worked in the industry and so I did my best and yeah. and what I didn't do, we talk about now, me and my kids, and we talk yeah. openly. We laugh about it too, cause see, they yeah. older now. They're like, ma, that time. Da, da, da. I even had my kids say to me, "I would have rather you be." Well, my son Nico has said, "I would have rather you be home more, and we lived a less lifestyle, than for you to be gone all the time and have yeah. that." That I that was something you gotta that I learned that. after the fact. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, because you cannot go back and redo it. I you literally can. was just saying to someone in the industry that manages a lot, I was telling her, you just come to the point where I did the best that I could with what I knew at the That's time. That's right. Don't better, yeah. you just do better. And yeah. I can't go back and redo anything. It was, mm -hmm. it, it will always be the way that it was. But mm -hmm. now when I know what's better, then I do better. And we mm -hmm. have a different relationship. There's nothing that you can do. So and, and how I, about this? How about this, Michelle? What? He, they were supposed to feel the way they felt because it was supposed to birth something in them for whatever they're going to go do. 
So it's all You're working together. Right. It's all working together. It's their journey. Yes, so it had a part to, out. yeah. Yeah. It is. I think we all, you know, we go through all, I mean, when we were growing up, we went through the same, not the same things, but things. I think that's just a parent-child experience growing up. Parents it do is. the best they could do. You do. And I think kids don't know that, but it, it is what it is from what our parents gave us and then from what we give out. But, you know, when you go on this journey to learn and be greater and uh, experience happiness or joy and you and I both, you know, going against the grain, that's something natural for us, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then when you decide, you know what, I don't want it this way. I want it that way. And you decide to learn better and do something different, then you teach your kids that. You know, that's I mean? right. I like grow as a person. You grow and they grow. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. I, I just, I was saying earlier, just to, you know, not have any regrets or the guilt. Yeah. Or the shame, you know? No, everything is always the way it should be. Yeah. That's it. It, it really is. It's the it way is. it should be. And it's a, it it's, it's a bigger purpose. It's something bigger happening. It and is. you don't know what you don't know. You don't. Say that again. You Come don't know it. what you don't know. And be okay with that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, just yes. be okay with that. That's Play right. Brand. Okay, so listen. I want to transition to this bomb. I told y'all I got on live and said, y'all need to go watch this movie before we get on here with Misa because... I thought it, you know, I have a movie on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So before I knew that, before Iyala said anything that she had interviewed you, I was clicking and I saw the promos and I was like, oh, oh, I'm about to watch this because this was my era. And mm -hmm. then I was like, Misa, like it was like, okay, <laughs> so how did I not know? And anybody that is from this 90s era that you were responsible for that pasty or low Kim gross. <laughs> Come on. Like, what? Don't laugh. <laughs> How did you think? Like, where did that come from? Where did that come from, Lisa? Um, let me tell you where that came from. One, one, one weekend I was hanging out at Missy Elliott's house and we were, you know, in her studio, listening to music, talking fashion. And she said, you know what? If I was Kim, I would just, I would just have, I, I would just have one titty out. I would just say F it and I would have one titty out. I wouldn't even care. She would say, I wouldn't even care. And I was like, what? And I was like, hmm. Put that it's in, not, in the back of my mind. I was like, how could you do something like that? Like, I don't know. I'm a creative person. So that got, I started thinking about like, wow, that could be something. And then the next big event that Kim and I had was the MTV Music Awards. And so um, Missy planted the seed. She sparked my imagination. And because it was, you know, sexy and, and out there, I wanted to make it really beautiful and ornate and feminine to like offset what was happening. And so, yeah, that's how that's how the idea came. I feel like, like you did such an amazing job because at first, at least to me, the 90s was more of the men's fashion, even with women. It was baggy yeah. clothes and big shirts and and what you did was took that and combined it and made it sexy. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, like it became yeah. like, oh, I want to wear that. Oh, I can put that. How you did that Beyonce with that corset and then the hat. Uh, I was like, yeah. okay, you know what? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. No, seriously, like that. I mean, Thank you, you did that. I feel like you single-handedly did that. But the, the question Thank that I you. have for you is how... How did it feel before the fact that I never knew that? Like, did that bother you at all? What? Did the what fact bother? that I never knew that you were responsible uh, for it. Like, no. Because, because you were doing your gift. You were doing Yeah, you I didn't care about my <laughs> credit or like all that. Right. That's, that that's it's like I used to say now. my credit is my check and that yes. <laughs> and the and and the and the opportunity to create and do something I love. That's love. all I cared about. Okay. Yes. So and when people you... always used to say, and they still say, "Oh, you're so modest." Are you... I mean, what do you want me to do? It's just my job. It's just my me, me being in a position to use my gift and make a difference and contribute to the world. And and I think when it doesn't even feel like work, when it feels like this is what I was born to do, like this yes. is that's what I do. Then it's like I don't need the credit from other people. Cause when I look mm -hmm. at it, it's like, oh, well I did that. And mm -hmm. right, my, my check. 
Because yeah. I had an old manager. <laughs> I'm just saying. I had an old manager, and she used to be like, listen, Michelle, she was the vice president of Donna Karen globally. Mm -hmm. and she said, she's a good friend of mine, though. When I got into it, I was like, you got to manage me because I don't know what I'm doing. Right. And she said, quiet money is the best money. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because haven't you seen anything else? Do you understand? Could, yes. could, could potentially be a problem. So yes. do what you love. Yes. And Keep it moving, you know what I mean? And so yeah. it's interesting, and I love to hear that you say that, nah, I was I was doing my job. Like, I was doing mm -hmm. what I... But I, I do have to say this. I do have, mm -hmm. because when I first saw the screening of my film at ABFF before we got the deal with Netflix, mm -hmm. you know how, um, as being driven and being a mover and a shaker, you just go from one thing to the next mm -hmm. thing, like, oh, mm -hmm. wow, thank you, mm -hmm. keep going. I literally had this moment and it was like God saying, yes, you get to like enjoy this, like you did this. When you saw the screening of the remix and you in it and just the entire thing, did you for once be like, I did this thing, like I for real did this thing? Mm -hmm. I was, I got to see it before the screening. I had a, got a little sneak peek. Um, Lisa Cortez and Farrah X, um, the directors, gave me an opportunity to screen it, and I was by myself, and I watched it. And at, from the beginning, it was like I was choked up, and like I was so full, and I had like I, 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 like tears were coming down my eyes because I could not believe it, and it felt so good, and it felt good to um, have my story told in such a beautiful way. You know, the the way I couldn't have imagined that it would come together the way that it did all those months of filming and, you know, all the ups and downs and me being a little close sometimes, like not really, you know, being in front of the camera. I'd be like, oh, I, it, was, I, it was like, but you did a really, you know, I know because I'm a producer. So it's like, no, no, you got to had the energy and you got it. Yeah. But you did a good job. Thank you. Thank you. And now that I've been through that, I'm I'm much more comfortable and open. And so it was a great learning experience for me. So I'm ready for my story, my full life story. Oh, well, come on now. Like, okay, so come like, we, we need to discuss it. Yes, I'm ready for that now. <laughs> but you definitely have one. Story. Yep. I think that I think that that people will wouldn't y'all love to see that? I think they would love to see the story of the Misa Hilton. That's what right. I was saying. Yeah. yeah. So even with even with this being out now, mm -hmm. but because of the question that I asked you before, I, I think I kind of uh, know the answer to this. But so this film didn't at all seem like in a little small part, sort of like redemption. Like I finally get to be seen in some type of way? Um, you know, I really don't look at things that way, honestly. I no, don't. I, no, I just, seriously. I just don't. But for everybody that does felt that way for me, it's something for them. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Because I will have so many people like, you did this for people. And I'm like, I, you know, I did what I did. However, um, one day my daughter, as my, my daughter must have been like 16 or 17, and I'll never forget, we were driving in the car, and she said, when well, she started to realize like everything I, that I've done and how I contributed to fashion and all that stuff, she said, Mommy, does it ever bother you that you don't get all the credit that you deserve for all the stuff that you did? She said, does that bother you? And I said, no, Madison. I said, it really doesn't bother me because I know what I did and I created what I did. And guess what? God will exalt me. Oh, I was just about to say that. I was just about to say, you know, when you do things um, really unto God because of the crafts and the gifts and the talents that he's given you, he says in due season, like you have to say mm -hmm. nothing. In due season, you'll, he will exalt. You will be That's exalted. Right. That's right. And I think... The fact that this is out now, the fact that this mm -hmm. happened, this is your due season. That's what Thank I think. Thank you. Yeah, and, and, and don't get me wrong. It does feel good. It does feel amazing. Yeah. But if I didn't get it, it still would feel amazing. Because you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're grateful. That's yes, I'm you're so grateful, grateful. Even for the gifts and the time, for your life, for your yes. experience, for all that yes. you've done and all that God has done. So, yeah, yes, I, I, that's I, right. 
I get that. I definitely yeah. get that. Yeah. Um, so now, I know it, it went, you created your school in 2012, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. The Misa Hilton, Hilton Fashion, Fashion Academy. Academy. Okay, yes. so let's talk about that. Yes. I think that's amazing. Like, it's yes. not even your give back. It's like your passion to train it others, is. right? Yes, yes, yes. You know, after experiencing all the success that I had and as the industry began to grow and open up and there were, you know, a lot of young creatives coming into the business, I started to notice that they didn't really have the skill set. They didn't understand the business of fashion styling. Um, they were able to maybe get to to the door, but not through the door and not be able to stay in the room. And instead of being critical and instead of talking about them, I wanted to make a difference. And I thought, I, I, I always live by this quote, when you learn, teach, when you get, get by Dr. Maya yes. Angelou. Yeah. And so me being, I, I'm a natural teacher. I'm a natural psychologist, life coach. I'm a certified life coach. So I had to go do that. That's another Come Part on, we gotta get together. But, <laughs> yeah, I love <laughs> personal development. I love um, sharing information. I love empowering people, and that's my gift as well. And I mean, I did that through, through fashion, you know. Yes. So, yes. Um, so anyway, to be able to give back to um, my community and individuals who look like me, who wanted to have the same experience. Um, I, I wanted to play a part in helping them do that through education, through mentorship, through um, teaching them the jewels, teaching them the things that they need to learn and sharing wisdom that no one else is going to tell them and other institutions. You know, I have real firsthand knowledge and experience in all areas of fashion. I've been a fashion editor, celebrity fashion stylist. I did runway fashion styling. I'm a costume designer in the union. I do television and film. Um, you name it, I've done it. So um, I wanted to put together a curriculum where I could support young creatives and, and achieving their dreams. And I, and I want to be a part in um, all the, the, the next generation of creatives going even further than I did and, 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 and filling more seats at more tables and making a difference. And not only that, being um, teaching them to be confident and courageous in their authenticity and their gift and their uniqueness and who they are, because that's what we need. Is, like creative people are supposed to pour into the world in that way. Absolutely. Not everybody cookie cutter do the same thing. And Absolutely. I started to notice that happening too. So it's like, what's your <laughs> gift? What are you good at? You Come know, on. I know what I'm good at right. and I know what my colleagues are good at. Like, so we have to help young people, period, whether they're creatives or not, know who they are and be proud of who they are and know that that's special. Everything about them that may seem different from someone else is actually their gift. And it's something that God put inside of them. So that was the C and that is that that was my reason. That was my why. And um this year will be eight years. We started with a fashion styling program. We now have a streetwear program, fashion technology, a business program, and we're continuing to add courses. And um, the, the students who have come through my program are doing very well and achieving success. And it, it's a great feeling and I love it. I mean, there were day, I mean, there were days when I was going through that rough time when I would go teach and I would be with my kids. That Wait, made my school whole was day. Open, Mesa? Like you had all of that. Yeah, I was a close of my school now. Mm -mm. So you just no. gave up your home. Mm-hmm. I had that was because I, I I was like, listen, I built this stuff and it means something to me. I can I, I'll get other things. I, I that was just a sacrifice I chose to make to Absolutely. keep my legacy going and to keep um everything that I believed in that I that I wanted to see grow. Grow. How does that affect your kids? It was tough. It was really hard for them because up until then, I had always been the type of woman that can make anything happen. I was the go-to person. Call me, I get it done. What, what, what you, I got it. What you got, girl? I, I got this. Okay, you gonna call me? Yeah, you yeah like this? taking care oh, of everything and everybody. And like, um, by the time I was 25, because I started uh, with Jodeci, I was 17. Girl. And, yeah, by the time I was 25, I had made a million dollars as a fashion stylist. So Come I have all three of my Lisa. children. Yes. 
I had made a million dollars by that time. And so I was used to just making things happen fast on the move, very confident. And that was like my superpower. And I felt like, you know, in the movies where the superpower gets taken away because you got to prove something yeah, <laughs> to somebody. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, how yeah. I felt. I was like, wait, I can't <laughs> do it no more. Like, wait, what's happening yeah, to me? Yeah. Like, I usually can make it happen. Things always work out because I believe they would. And so probably somewhere along my path there, got in and I had some subconscious thoughts going on or whatever and it started to play out you know life but um I don't know what the what was the question <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. I went back there like yes, a, because it was so it, oh was it tough for my children yeah. yes but listen yeah. what you said people needed to hear though they really yeah to and it and it was but they they're strong and they're resilient um i think my daughter being the baby she used to be like ma like what's going on like when is like what what's happening and she was younger so she didn't fully understand everything um uh justin was my rock he was you know very supportive of me and helped me And then Nico, that's my. Like, with me the whole time, like going through emotionally. So, and, you know, my kids are amazing. They're very strong. Overall, we've been through a lot as a family, just in everything that we always have had to go through that has built us up and made us strong. And that was just another challenge. But they had never seen me in a state of not making it happen and not figuring it out. And I think that sometimes they made, need to see that, though. It was very important because that's life, I think right? So. That's life. Yeah. But at first, I wanted to be super, I wanted to look like super mom all the yeah. time. Yeah. And I yeah, couldn't yeah. anymore. So I got over it and we got through it. Um, this, I, you might get this question a lot, but I just had a thought. Did it, do, do people ever look at you and say, well, how did that happen to you? You know, you were Diddy. You, you, you were his baby mama. Like, you had his son. Did it, does anybody has ever thought, like, okay, you, well, people didn't know, right? Wait, say it again, because my phone. So oh. my question is, you know, you having um, Puppy's oldest son. Oh, yes. When people found out, did they ever say, well... How did that happen when Puffy is Puffy and you have his oldest yeah. son and why weren't you in a better position? Did anyone right. ever say that? Yeah, I think people might wonder that now. But remember, a lot of people didn't really know. And people that didn't know knew why. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Wait a minute. Okay. And, but, but, you know, but listen. Yeah, that I was my, listen. That, would, that, that was my journey. Yeah, it absolutely. wasn't. Nobody was supposed to step in. Absolutely. Nobody would. I absolutely. had to go through that to get here today, and so and I'm and I'm 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 happy about that. I can honestly say that because I know what I got out of it. So right. you know, it, it's easy to because then that goes back to like kind of blaming and thinking some all outside. This absolutely, is about, absolutely. This is about me and God and my absolutely. ascension and my growth and absolutely. my evolution. Absolutely. You're so bomb. The, the, just you. as a sidebar, did anybody ever, because, you know, I don't know when Yala and I, I, that's what I was saying to you before. I'm like, I didn't see Misa when we were backstage. But, you know, you resemble Mary to me. Oh, did really? Someone else that? just said that. <laughs> that's my sister, yes. Yeah, yes. like, I'm we looking at you. sisters. Right? And maybe because you do a lot of her looks and all that, but... So, the blonde hair and the glasses and the, I don't know, just we're real, we're real sisters though. Like we, we can you know, we grew up together. We've been friends over thirty years. We're together. Wow. I was gonna surprise you. She was on her way over here, but then I had to do something. I was gonna let her come in and say hi. Oh shoot! Oh <laughs> yeah, um, but, yeah awesome. but we're but you together know, all the time. Yeah, yeah, because you definitely, you literally, definitely resemble her. And then one thing I, I just thought about, what do you think, because you are, you know so much about the industry and fashion, what do you think is different from the 90s when you, or when you got started till now? Hmm, like what's different the about fashion? Yes. I would say yes. that the good is that there's so much more opportunities um, for people of color and for women 
And I'm so proud of what the Black and Fashion Council is doing at Harlem's Fashion Bro and Brandis Daniel. I'm proud of my academy. I'm proud of what Zarina Akers is able to do, highlighting um, Black designers and, and what Beyonce is doing, highlighting Black designers. So there's a lot more opportunity and support and people that look like us to, to make us, to help us to feel empowered. So that's something that's different from the 90s. Um, and then also to see how much our culture and fashion is just is just like a global Boom. phenomenon. <laughs> everybody, everybody. Everybody what? loves it. Why does it say 7.50 and it feels like I've been talking to you for five minutes? <laughs> Lord, help, Jesus. But <laughs> from this, yeah. just, just um, a couple of more things, because I, I refuse to let this hang up on you. Okay. Is there anything that you want the world to know about you that maybe we don't know? Just Misa Hilton as, as who she is. Maybe not even as a stylist or maybe mm -hmm. not a fashion icon. Just Misa Hilton. Mm -hmm. Anything that I would want? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? I'll be, but I'll be a funny but serious but funny. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, because I'm private. But I, the I movie, know. watch the movie. If you didn't watch the film, I that's something too. that people didn't know that, yes, I struggled. I did not, I, had, I have struggled. I have had my share of obstacles and I shared that and I shared a very vulnerable moment for myself. So that's something that I'm very comfortable and 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 happy to share. That that's probably the most the biggest next? thing that what's next for me? Um to grow my academy, to go into different states, to continue to create and design. I'm a creator for life, to continue my life coaching and to be a contributor uh, and bring positive energy everywhere that I go, whether it's in fashion or sewing into the lives of other people. And being someone that people can look at and say, if she did it, I could do it too. Come on. That's the whole reason why I do these. That is the whole That's reason right. why I started these, just for people to be able to see themselves and women that they see every day, don't know, and maybe... Um, we'll never know, but understanding that, yeah, she did it, I can do it. God loves me no different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Um, so, yes, that's right. Fashion Academy, you're going to continue with that. You now, I saw a remix shop. Am I missing something? You're not oh, yes, about yes, that? yes. Come on, Misa. Yes. I know we're yes. not working. Yes. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So, I'm the global creative partner at MCM Worldwide. And I have a shop on the mcmworldwide.com website. And I have, and, and the items are also available in stores. If you go to um, any of the stores in the malls, you'll see um, my family picture in there. And you'll see um, the, the remix movie playing in the background. And so um, it's really an exciting time. I love MCM as a company and a brand. Um, our leader, Miss Sungju Kim, is an amazing powerhouse of a woman, which she's been able to do single-handedly and still own the company 100% herself is amazing. Oh, and she's boy. been a great mentor to me. And she shared so much of her story. And she's even going through it. You know what I mean? And she said, you know, I, I'll never forget. This is sorry, Barbara. I ought to tell you this. When I was in Korea and I was at um, the MCM headquarters out there, um, I was at her office and she gave me a tour and it's a picture of her sitting on boxes and um, it's framed. It's a huge picture. And she said, me said, look at that picture. She said, do you know that the day before I had lost everything and I didn't know how I was going to continue, how I was going to pay, pay all these employees, how I was going to do this, how I was going to do that. And she said, and I prayed and prayed and prayed to God. She's a Christian woman. I prayed and prayed and prayed and answer I was obedient and I made everything back in less than a week and she said if that can happen to me it can happen to you too isn't that that's a miracle and she always tells me let's make miracles together let's 
make a difference in the world. Let's support women. Like she's so charitable and just such an amazing person. So this is where I'm so happy to be there. This is, there's no other place better for me. Some people may as well, how come you're not here or there or there? Cause I'm supposed to be here and at MCM and that that's where God would have me to be. And I love it. I love working with the team. Um, it's very family oriented and they give me so much freedom to create and, and so much um, support and honor, and I really appreciate it, and I honor them too. So, yeah. I think you are absolutely amazing. Thank I you. Um, Thank you. I knew it though, because <laughs> just of your energy, but even talking to you, yeah, I think you are absolutely amazing. And I think Thank that everything you. that is happening now, you are absolutely deserving of it. So, Thank I you. honor you for coming before us and just setting the stage, yeah. not even just in fashion, but just being a woman that is brave and fearless. and able to stand in her truth for what yes. it is that she wants to do in the good and in the bad for being That's a mother because right. i didn't even get to ask you if you're married or single because you know you're fine so, thank okay, you we're not i'm not because <laughs> my not girl single, over here said but i'm not married single. yet <laughs> wait, wait wait what'd you say i oh, said i'm not single but i'm not married yet oh oh wait a minute okay Someone said, well, how do I get to date you? And I said, well, you better consult God. You better go through him. And yeah. <laughs> works it right back to me. That's yeah. how you're going to date me. I was the same way. And then, you know, it just takes the, the right person at the right time. And then you become open to it all. Because I'm like, listen, I have to worry about my business. These collections is cool. Like, I don't have time for it. I'm good. I date, always dating, but yeah. I don't need to be serious. And then okay, well, I got next. So give me a little rub on my shoulder. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Wait, yeah. okay, so hold on. I got, do I got two minutes? Do I have two minutes? Okay, wait, right. okay, here we go. Uh, pumps or flats? Just yeah, either one. Right now, flats. <laughs> <laughs> Chanel or MCM? I know what that's going to be. MCM. Come on. Uh, but we could be friends. MCM <laughs> and Chanel could be friends. <laughs> Biggie and Tupac? B-I-G all day, but I love Tupac uh, too. <laughs> you know, I know we are advocate with, but okay, hip hop or R and B? Hip hop. Uh, but I love hip hop and R and B too. I was just about to say, <laughs> Lil Kim or Mary? I guess there's Lil Kim or Mary J. Both. I know the both. <laughs> All right, you young. Look. Okay, hold on. Love or money? <laughs> love. <laughs> That's what Lisa Ray Charles would have been like, Lisa money. <laughs> love. Huh, okay. Love All brings right. money. Uh, that, that love and that energy and that abundance <laughs> that brings money. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, FIT or Misa Hilton Fashion Academy? M H F A all day, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was so fun. Thank you. So Although much. I'm an adjunct professor at FIT. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Misa Hilton. Yay! <laughs> Hopefully, I will see you soon. Thank you for doing this for me. Much, yeah. much, 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 of much. Of course. Success. Anytime. On the, movie, sis. On the you. shop. On your academy. Yeah, and let's keep in touch. You are amazing. Yes, we definitely will. Thank you so much. This was Thank amazing. You. I enjoyed Yay. myself. Yes. Everybody say bye, Misa. Bye, everybody. See you next time. Hey, you guys. Okay, here we go. I am Michelle Lopez. Tune in next Tuesday for another woman of beauty, excellence, and power. Love